Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dork down for a while Hey, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. You know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com, FamilyPetAncestry.com. You're probably already there. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg composed and sang that song with his wife, Sarah, that you just heard. He's going to sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Patrick Brady is going to fix this audio, and Vilmos works on JackieCation.com, the website. There are many ways to support the show. The Amazon link is one. You can use an Amazon link from JackieCation.com or DorkForest.com to go to Amazon. You order like normal and it supports the show. There is a straight up donation button, PayPal or Venmo to this uh, email address that is mine, Jackie at JackieCation.com, where you can just donate to the show if you like the show a lot. I think PayPal has figured out a way to do a monthly. If you want to go monthly, please do. Other ways to support the show if you want to is you can buy merch. There's Dork Forest t-shirts and all the shirts are union made here in America. So they run a little big. Union Bayside. So if you want to look up their size chart. And then the other merch is my stand-up merch. On JackieCation.com, you can watch me do stand-up. You can look at my schedule and the stand-up merch, a couple of different t-shirts, a couple of different enamel pins, and all my CDs and my DVD. If you want to live stream my DVD, it's over there at ComedyFilmNerds.com. They have a live streaming capability, or you can get a hard copy of the DVD on my website. Oh, there are premium episodes at Bandcamp. The dorkforest.bandcamp.com has probably 10 episodes that were done live. They cost me a couple of bucks to make, so I charge you a couple of bucks. If you've run out of regular episodes, go over to ba- the dorkforest.bandcamp.com and get some more. Other than that, I say this. Let's get into the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm back in my living room. I am sitting here with comedian Sean White. Hello and welcome to you. Hi. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Love sure. the living room you have here. It's a, it's a delightful living room. We just bought new furniture that is going to come on Thursday. Oh, I was this about to say, this is very old if you did not these are add that very last part. old furniture that... But it was so... Look at look at the hieroglyphics on the on the front. No, I love it. This is, um, this is a lot like... What we were we just bought recent uh, I just been doing with my girlfriend we we're just looking for new furniture and she like the uh, cool law office look yeah uh, with the this studded, ex- the studded ends and things you know like what that. this is this I've never owned new furniture we just mm-hmm. bought bre- uh, uh, we bought a living room set Ooh. and uh, this is the first set where everything matched I've and never I never knew I I never knew I wanted that yeah until we got this but we got it from uh, f- uh, Salvation Army okay like 12, 13 years ago. <laughs> and it was clearly furniture that was in the foyer of some sort of business because mm-hmm. it was it it has that you know this hieroglyphics and the yeah. studded and it it has that vibe. Yeah, that's like crooked law, like like lawyer written all over it. This is yeah. fantastic, you know. And uh, so it, it it has served us well. Yeah. But we will be moving on <laughs> to See, something I, else. Once I bought my first uh, bedroom set, I got kind of hooked to the idea that I don't have to go have used. Yeah. yeah, like I well, I mean, and uh, admittedly, one of them is now getting very old, and I'm and I started thinking like, you know what, maybe I am gonna, but like then this weird urge to suddenly refinish wood suddenly came out of me. Oh, and there I was you go. Like, well, that is a very cheap, stubborn instinct to suddenly go like, no, I will put nail polish on this thing before <laughs> I throw out this dresser. Uh, yeah, I think 15 years ago was the first time I had a bed that was only mm-hmm. mine, even from when I was a child, <laughs> and I still have a f- my dresser was uh, found. On the uh, side of the street I, in Los Angeles. I, I tell you, uh, nothing cleanses the uh, the furniture soul like uh, moving first off to another country and then having a divorce after that. You won't have a single bit of property left by the time you're done. <laughs> Fit everything you must into a start a new. Rebuild and then, then go like... Yeah. Well, at least you're not a guy sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I have never, you know, I'll be honest. I have heard that joke a million, billion times, and I have never. So it occurs. It 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 it, it has occurred to me that people do that, but I have never in my life thought that you would just go with the other. Like it was never an expensive part of the bed. 
Right. The 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 like what the, you what you got the, the mattress and frame. You I mean, the frame. It seems like a, it, like That's a fifty dollar option. You could have just gotten a bad one. Like you could, right. They come. They usually come with like a free metal frame. That's what I had. There's for years. no reason not to. So I didn't know there were so many people walking around without them. And then and they apparently successfully bringing women home to complain on stage later. Like and right. It's always one of those <laughs> because it's a weird kind of it is a trope that has been joked about enough. That that's how I found out about it. I never ever went out with a guy or knew Same. a guy. And then I would have people like, or or when the when a, when a comic admits that they've been sleeping on an air mattress, and I always go, oh, grow the fuck oh. up. Yeah, there's a, a very close Why friend of mine. You would you like me to write okay? down the name? It's uh, <laughs> she has been sleeping on an air mattress, and I was like, I will lend you four hundred dollars. Right, it's really I not. I cannot deal because they they don't they they're just for the night. It doesn't it's make, for guests. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense why you would... So, like, it, it's one of those things, like, with, with, with even, like, your job. Like, when someone agrees to, like, a five-hour commute, and you know for yes. a fact that that is going to make your day awful every single day, why wouldn't you just take the little bit of step to make your whole life easier? Right. You could make your whole Move bedroom experience. two and a half hours closer to wherever you work. If you raise your... Like, I'm too tall to think about, like like... The idea yes. of like laying all the way on the floor every single time, like that's <laughs> the act of rolling off of bed and then just being feet height is just worth <laughs> the cost yeah. of the frame. Yeah. And that chair is a perfect, because uh, that chair is also super squishy now because of 14 Ooh. years later. Ooh, anyway, I like the, the curve of this. Uh, Sean White, we should talk about, we should use your hour to talk about what you love. And I have to tell people, by the way, it's at Sean White Comedy, S E A N. Which, uh, when I was a child, used to thought it was seen. Yes, uh, that's what I was routinely called as a child quite often. Because of dum dums. It is the Irish pronunciation of John from the Bible. Right. So, uh, Sean White is a stand up comic and a delight. And he is at Sean White Comedy all over the board Instagram, Twitter, all the things. So, but you want to talk about Star Trek? I love Star Trek with an absolute passion. Original Star Trek? All of them. All the Star Trek. Uh, I, I, I like all of them. I, I was raised on all of them. My parents used to take me to Star Trek conventions, Dragon Con, since I was a little kid. I met Q. That's right, because you're Atlanta guy. Yep. I have, I, I have, we, they originally renamed my hometown, Huntsville, Alabama, to uh, Enterprise, Alabama, for a convention for a week. Right. Uh, my family uh, met with like my mom, or my dad going into the bookstore. My mom uh, was managing and saying, you're organizing your sci-fi stuff wrong. And they argued about sci-fi. You come from a, there's a nice very pedigree. deep sci-fi stock. This that is, is a, this is a pedigree and nerddom. Well and done, the dorks. They absolutely yeah. loved. We loved Star Trek very, very much. Uh, I remember watching like the new episodes of Voyager, which, by the way, Sarah Silverman looks looks exactly the same from her episode in Voyager, released in the '90s. Like, actually, it was in 1999. Looks exactly the same from that as she does. Uh, yeah, now. she does not age. She uh, at she's, all. Uh, it's amazing. I don't and understand how you can be in a Star Trek episode in 1999 and look exactly... And then 20 years later, exactly. look like that same lady. That's fantastic. It is fantastic. And it's not like she looked 40. Right. Right. She always looked 29. But it's like, She looked 29, though, when she was 19, <laughs> which is weird. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess... Right. I, I, like, she, she, she's just always... I think uh, some people just like chose a face. And she's just, an old soul. I'm worried that though one day she's going to age all 90 years in like <laughs> one minute. That's, <laughs> it's, uh, it the all Dorian catches Gray. up. Yeah. It very easily could. So... You have, uh, you, you've got toys. I, I actually, I have... Uh, or do we even call them toys? I, well, I mean, I'll call them toys. I'm going to play with them. I don't sure. know. I've got... Uh, so, like, from when I was a kid, uh, every Christmas we had uh, our normal decorations on the tree and everything, but we also, every year, we bought the newest Hallmark Star Trek ornaments and things like you that. Had all, you have all the Star... <laughs> every single one. And My buddy Lee has then that. Then we got too many, so we eventually had to make a wreath, a giant wreath of only Star Trek memorabilia because oh. we also had every 70s memorabilia Mego, including the Gorn, that was also the exact same one. What's used. a Mego? Mego was. Or do you ever read Twisted Toy Fair Theater, the original like base basis no. for Robot Chicken from Wizard Magazine? The original. Okay. So I was right. We're gonna get Start, it to a yeah, hole. Go. Oh my! <laughs> I, go I, I, I just got really excited. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, the original action figures, like in the seventies, were called Megos, and they were pretty much cloth dolls. That all there were Barbie dolls, pretty much, but with a oh, yeah. uh, with all just different cloth outfits and a plastic head, and they were held together with like a like barely a rubber band for that, and um, they made a whole Star Trek collection. I remember the 
and they, seeing them. And they repeated an entire series of them for the Marvel characters as well. They did. They were too cheap to use different models. So the Gorn, which is what uh, the amazing creature that, that Captain Kirk beats oh, up himself, right. yes. is actually the exact same mold as the lizard used for Spider-Man. Okay. And so and the original, uh, so in the, the original comic book magazine uh, that was considered the gold standard for action figure pricing and, and, uh, and worth was Wizard Magazine. And okay. And every single month they came out with a new uh, issue that also had in it a comic strip called Twisted Toy Fair Theater. And that was the uh, was uh, literally what Robot Chicken is now. Yeah. It was that, but with uh, mega action figures doing only, only comic book jokes. And then Seth Green became an intern for it and took the idea, used his own celebrity to pitch it, took the idea from them, <gasps> fired everyone but one person he took from it, and that's what Robot Chicken is, is a theft of Twisted Toy for a Theater. It was originally Bastard. all comic. You can actually get all, there's 10 collections of all of the, uh, the, the, twice, the, the toy, toy Fair theaters, and they're just comic strips. horrible lampoons of every awful, like, it's like, uh, so Franklin R- Richards, uh, like, loses his parents and tries to touch Swamp Thing and says, I'm scared, and immediately blows up from okay. being able to, from, because anybody who knows fear burns at the Swamp Thing's touch. Right, right. Like, when, <laughs> Al- right. when Alan Moore was writing it, and they always, like, had, like, fourth wall jokes about that the entire time. And it was just, it was... That's kind of cool. And they even answered any of your comic book questions that you uh, you would write in. So, like, my, my brother even got one written in, and it was uh, one of our first questions we asked as a kid, which is, if adamantium's unbreakable, how is it mined? And this is before they had released that it was actually a, an artificial metal and they had to ah. answer that question because of my brother's write into Wizard Magazine. Well, that'll show them. Yeah. And, no, uh, that was, and <laughs> like, well, you always got to find out how much your action figures are worth because when I was a kid, uh, if you got a hundred on a test and only if you got a perfect score, my parents would give us one of the action figures they had bought. That we, so whenever we went to a store and we're like, we want, we want, we want, they'd say, okay, but you don't get it. Right. You don't get it. I'll buy it right in front of you and not give it to you. And I'm going to put it at the top of this closet. And if the and on, you can go look at it. And you can only from the get ground. it when you get a hundred on a test. And like I remember breaking down crying what? in class one time because my teacher joked with me that I missed one question. And I broke down crying in the middle wow. of class because I didn't get my Silver Surfer. Oh. That's that's what I wanted so badly. <laughs> but we had. All the laser toys, oh God, laser you're tags. You were raised by the Star most Trek. powerful nerds in the world. <laughs> oh my God. They, they raised us on that to like, if you want it, you got to get perfect for you it. You got to earn it. Yeah. And so, like, that's why, like, I, I always like did like really well on that kind of stuff purposely to be able yeah. to do it. Um, and it, but it, Star Trek was something that we all like loved a lot. And it, well, I remember every Christmas, like, Star Trek and Christmas went together to me. Okay. Like, because that's when the Mega Action figures came out, and these were like broken, janky figures from the seventies. That like okay. Kirk was missing a leg, Spock had like one foot. Like they barely had after pieces. Like right, mi- like somehow missing. But they it. were somehow val. They were so they were even broken. They were Christmas. Even broken, they were actually worth a lot of money. They turns oh, really? out they were big collectibles, and they still are giant collectibles. And we've since lost them due to. A uh, thing involving Any of- uh, well, a sibling passing away who had them, and then her her husband kept them as kind of a, and it's kind of a weird. There's no nice way to say like, look, the sibling died. Can we have the family memorabilia back? Right. Uh, but it also it, to him, it also means something. You know what I mean? Right. So you can't be like, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Like he took my my <laughs> like my my brother's <laughs> Thor hammer that had technically she took it after he died, and then when she died, he just coincidentally didn't return it. And there's no nice way to go. You get a real chance to see Sean White do some stand up comedy. <laughs> Comedy. There's a there's a dark family history going on. I remember the first time I saw it, man. <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Your stand up. Thank you. I, yeah. I, I I I absolutely love yours for the exact same reason. The fact that I remember the first time I heard the 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 Frozen Isle as the uh, list oh, the of Native imperialism. American. Yeah, yeah. That was I. I mean, because honestly, you're you're one of my favorite comics working, and oh, that, like thanks. that kind of intelligence in a joke is something very rare, and I love. Everything that has those references and uh, and everything in it, but, like oh, has an appreciation for darkness without being dark for shock. It has, it is merely treating historical evidence as it, what it is, fact, right. neither positive nor negative. It's our own it crappy is, intuition that makes us assign a positive or negative to it. Right, and you have to, and if you forget it, then that's it puts that, your own mirror where, to yourself. Yes. and that's when you get to have to that, deal with it, and you can learn learn from it. Yeah, but that was, but being exposed to that stuff. Also, because say like for example, uh, even like the so the original series, but what people have this weird uh, remembrance of it that I feel is inaccurate, 
Yeah. In, in the sense that they remember always like Captain Kirk sleeping with everyone and all this. Other, oh, working the ladies? Right. And all of these things that realistically. Space Cowboy? If you actually look at it, it was only three seasons. And yes. And really a lot of the stuff was only made. Which means what? 55, 60 episodes? No, uh, for them, I don't think there were even that many per season because they were right. not too popular. If it wasn't for Lu- Lucille uh, Ball, like it wouldn't have gone the full length. Like she actually fought to make sure that it got its full run. Okay. Um, and every other season after, a series after that got seven full seasons. Okay. Uh, until the... You know, debacle of Enterprise. But uh, after... Oh, it? but Crackula? <laughs> Scott He's actually, Bakula? He was I the, love Scott Bakula. The very first uh, Star Trek captain to not come from a bona fide theater background. The only one to not be a one of the most prolific Shakespearean actors of their day. Uh, Shatner was a Shakespearean? Canadian, Canadian Shakespeare. That's why he talks the way he does. That's why people wonder why he talks the way he does. That's dynamic pentameter. That is actually his interpretation of it. Okay, that is his interpretation of it. Moving yes. on. Okay. <laughs> but that's a Leonard Nimoy. That's why he didn't have to audition because he's considered one of the best Tevias on Fiddler uh, on the Roof in uh, Broadway's history. Wow. He was a very fa- famous, he's the only skinny Tevia to really do a really good job. <laughs> and it's something that like, uh, so Catherine, K- K- Kate Mulgrew, for example, was considered right. one of the best Lady Macbeth of all time. Oh, a- uh, a- I would have loved to see that. Uh, Avery Yates, I believe, uh, the, uh, Cisco for Deep Space Nine was the head theater teacher at Yale at the time. Then it was, Wow. That, that's why he yells this way. Like, yeah. They're all very theatrical background. That's one reason people think they're so cheesy. They're not. They're theatrically trained to have big gestures. But the problem yeah. is they don't know how to do camera acting. And right. so they're doing... Acting for the camera <laughs> can be much more so subtle. Shat- Shatner's acting like he's out, he's doing Canadian Shakespeare out in, out in outdoors while right. everyone else is sitting there doing TV acting. And right. so it comes off... Very hammy comparatively, right. and right, that's. Right. I mean, but you got it. But even like for uh, all those those actors, just had such a strong presence uh, that it it always stuck out to me. It's very like, it, but also it turned off a lot of people. I right. know, like a lot of people who didn't like watching it specifically because they went, "Oh, it seems cheesy," and it's like, yes, right. yes, it is. But at the same time, I feel. But you're, you're still watching Columbo. That guy's not uh, cheesy to you. Come on. Oh my God. I love Columbo. One, one, one last thing. <laughs> but one of the things about it is I realized uh, I like Star Trek not necessarily for the acting. No. I like Star Trek because of the broader ideals that it brought. That it made me think. I like I like being distracted by a bigger idea. Right. Sometimes. And right. And that's something you don't get with a reality show. Yes, the reaction was real, but nobody brought up a premise that my brain could chew on for a minute. Right. It it literally introduced me to science fiction. And so and it and it and it had those larger than life and sure, there was a lot of screwing around, and it was space opera to some extent. Yeah, but well, it but was... not Battlestar Galactica reboot level. Like at no? least at least they left the ship. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like at least they went out into space. <laughs> But they all—that they, was the problem with Deep Space Nine, though. Sometimes is that—that <laughs> that is true. That was actually a lot of criticism for it, is because it was more—it was—it uh, was more of a soap opera version. But the thing was also this: is, you consider it. Uh, that was the last one that Gene Roddenberry really had his hands in. So like Voyager was like a scribble on a cocktail napkin written by Gene Roddenberry. But realistically, they all followed a very simple structure, and it was all meant to show. Uh, so. Uh, everything was very human based. He didn't want anyone to be scared of aliens because it was so new. Mm-hmm. So he made everyone look humanoid. And then also he didn't want anyone to be scared of robots. This is another reason why he was he was so pro technology that he didn't he, th- he thought people would get too scared of it. Oddly enough, he had these weird beliefs of humans, but also at the same time put his own wife in a skirt on the front. Uh, on it, like it, he his wife was always in a short skirt in the front in uh, on the bridge in uh, the, the original series. Right. And uh, it was just one of those like very forward choices in some ways. And then in some directions, it was like, all right. Um, right well, and and c- sort of classic powerful dude kind of thought where he was just like, we, we want this to be very progressive. But I also don't think of women as actual people. Right. So, and it's fine. It's, I mean, the thing is, is uh, the steps were made and he made some of them, mm-hmm. which is good. But it's also, it's uh, some of the effect that it had. So, uh, for good or for worse, uh, say, for example, like Whoopi Goldberg only got into anything she got into because she saw Ahura. Like she saw yep. a black character that was not a maid for the first time. She also yep. had the first interracial kiss that was ever on TV, despite the fact that it was forced by mental like manipulation. Right. But it was still the very first example of it. Which is so funny because uh, it wasn't like it was a guy making out with a with a dog or right. a woman making out with a cat. But it's still considered 
first. From, you know? Yeah, it was, it's his big first kiss with Uhura. And, um, but he made up with a green person, like, you know, right before, and nobody cared. Nobody but, gave a damn. Right. And you're like, uh, that seems interspecial. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is something they never really seem to have a problem with. And something they really did try to get in the... So, say, for example, also, he, uh, Gene Roddenberry was very against the creation of the Borg. Like, it was uh, introduced in the writer's room quite a few times in The Next Generation and constantly shot down because he didn't want there to be an idea of robots that use technology for bad because he didn't want to uh, create uh, any idea of fear with technology. Well, that was one of the things that's so... What I liked about Star... I mean, if, when, when you look at the comparison of Star Trek to Star Wars... Right, fairy tales versus actual, like, stories. Right, right. And, 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 I mean, literally, Star Wars is just a quest. It's it's just a it's a quest story well, of a admit hero that he based Star Wars off. Of, there's this one uh, book that it is a breakdown of every hero story, and it goes from Beowulf and on, where mm-hmm. it breaks down the basic requirements of every fairy tale. <laughs> right, they all need the young hero who comes out, who even like in every single thing that happens in Star Wars happens in this book. It happened right. in Beowulf. It happens in all of them. People always go, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. I was always like, well, I mean, princes and princesses are cool and all, but that's... I love, I love Star Wars, I, but I, I don't love it like I love Star Trek. Right. Because Star, Star Trek is bigger <laughs> than all of us, I, but I I loved the... Um, well, I mean, they did repeat a lot of stuff. Sure. Like So I, I felt like uh, Next Generation, for example, uh, got to a point where it was either... And a lot of the shows ended up getting in this loop where they meet an alien and it's either, oh, my God, they're actually just like us. We should love them. Or right. it's, oh, my God, it turns out they will never be alike. We should kill them. Mm-hmm. Or holodeck malfunction or <laughs> romance episode. And it was just those four episodes repeated on loop, loop for like forever. And it's it, sometimes it got – so I used to say, for example, like when I uh, rewatch Voyager, Deep Space Nine, all the other ones uh, – I'll start an episode and recognize that I hate it and click like to skip it. And then mm-hmm. I'll notice that I've actually skipped that episode every single time for the 10 times I've watched the whole series. Oh God. I have never dedicated myself in Voyager to a Harry Kim episode or a, the doctor and seven episode, like, or right. with deep space nine, by God, if they put on costumes that are walking to the, walking to the holog- holodeck, I'm out. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry. I don't care. I want a bigger plot. That's like those episodes. What are your favorite episodes? <laughs> uh, well, honestly, singularly favorite episode of all time, I would say, um, is the episode in Voyager when they revisit uh, an episode from seasons before without even mentioning it. So there's an episode where Harry Kim and Tom Paris, and I think about season five, they it's called like Demon Class Planet, and it's one where they um, they need uh, dilithium really really bad or like blah blah. They know where they can find yeah. it. Yeah. Um, then they go and they find this planet, but the problem is it's a Demon Class Planet, which means it's completely unhospitable, can only last for a little while. Blah blah. They can't tra- teleport the uh, dilithium they need off, so they need to send somebody down to take On a, a sample. Ship. Yeah. yeah. And so they go down, do the sample, and then they both disappear. And uh, that's fine. I hate both those characters. And but right. then they ended up saving them. Boo, whatever. And <laughs> then this is what uh, and what what actually ends up happening is that dilithium was sentient and uh, but never knew sentience though. It just mimicked things until it touched one of them, and then it suddenly it like mapped their entire brain because all it was doing was just copying objects that it touched. It had never touched a sentient object because the planet was too harsh. Okay. It finally touched what living life was. It and it copied Harry Kim and Tom Paris. Okay. And so then they find out, eventually they figure it out. They leave them there on the planet, the two clones, and okay. they go about their own merry way. Then seasons later. Right. Seasons later, there's just like just out of nowhere, uh, the ship's just chugging along, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, hey, guys, we got this new warp drive online. We're going to do great. This is going to be fantastic. And they're going to be home in a year. Like mm-hmm. they're going to leave amazing things that they figured out, all this jazz. Right. <laughs> and then suddenly, one of them just starts melting. And they're like, what happened? And like, it turns out the new warp drive they made emits radiation. Yes. Yes. That is harmless to humans and organic life. Mm-hmm. But they're not organic life. They're actually that uh, that 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 liquid dilithium from that planet after Voyager left. They copied the whole damn ship, 
and all the life in it. And, and because it was new to sentience, it, did, it eventually forgot that they were clones. And it was able to copy the entire ship and fly off and thought it was supposed to go home to Earth because it didn't, it forgot it was a clone. Wait a minute, there was a parallel crew and ship yep. and everything? Whole thing, down to the whole, you know, whole nine yards. And the only thing that wasn't being affected by the new radiation, the new war tribe uh, that they put in, were things that they just brought on the ship just recently. And they can only exist, turns out, in, in thanks to their own De- or like like radiation, they just expose themselves to not realizing what had happened. They uh, they eventually they try to get back to the closest demon class planet that they possibly can, and they uh, they they find one, and then this mining ship's there is like you know f off, get out of here, and they like beat the crap out of them and make them run off. Yeah. Then they can't get to another demon. They try as hard as they can to get back to where they can. And again, they've been using this special warp drive, so they're really fucking far away from yeah. home, and they don't have anything they can do about it. They go all the way back as fast as they can. The captain's melting. Everyone has giant patches of liquid, like dilithium in their faces. Like, random sensors are going off. How did I miss this? <laughs> this is a Janeway episode. Yes, it's a Janeway episode. It's a, it's a fantastic episode that just, like, out of nowhere, just references one from... from from seasons ago without saying anything. What? And then, like, it's so it then just shows, you know, like, you know, they teach you how to also even how to write these episodes occasionally with, with episodic stuff is how do you write a show that doesn't focus on any of the main characters? This is actually a way of doing it. Like, and then, so what happens is in their last dying breath, they shoot a beam, they, they, they find what they think is the real Voyager. They shoot it a distress call. They're warping as fast as they possibly can to get to it. 90% of the crew is dead and turned to liquid and they're sitting there with, the holodeck sensors are offline, so the doctor's down. Everything's pretty much destroyed. They have no food. They're literally just dropping like flies and taking yeah. over. And then in the last minute, it's like Harry Kim and Seven of Nine are like the only two people left. They have like their their um their their like tor- torpedo to be able to have all their logs and all their everything because they know they can't get saved. So they're at least gonna try to have some record of their existence ever happening. Right. And they try to shoot it, and then the torpedo launcher jams because it melted. And then by the time they come out of warp, like, so they, like Voyager gets the distress signal, the real Voyager does, they pull out of warp, and they just see a big pile of goo. And they go, huh. That's a, and they just that's keep unfortunate. Going. And then, so they and don't they have the new... Know. So they don't ever get the new warp drive. Nope. They never and get any of it. It's just this one off. Completely destroyed everything. No gain, no over. It's just an episodic, perfect little piece referencing something that you missed from, from a season Seasons ago. ago. <laughs> and so it literally, Monster of the Week, one off episode referencing a million years ago. Mm-hmm. And. And everyone dies. Sound and fury it's- signifying <laughs> nothing. Yep. Holy shit, that's awesome. Every single person they met, every single positive thing they did amounted to, like, they're going to show up places and people are going to have heard them before. And that's the thing is actually they do wonder how people have necessarily have heard of them before right. they got places before. You don't know how much, how many people that ship talked to. Right. You have no idea what the work that they did. And what was a one-off episode where two characters get cloned becomes an entire sentient life that ran off and did its own thing and did better For years. than and the, the original, original crew. They wow. did better. And they less of them died. They were doing better. I love it. Like that is, Wow. That was my favorite single Star Trek episode to reference that and come back and then have it mean nothing. <laughs> wow <laughs> just to come out and see a thing of goo and they go oh i don't know what that is huh that's weird and they just keep going and then they just keep going yep that's like that's why i loved voyager so much because it was one of the only ones that got back to the original roots of episodic exploration that was something about the original series where they met a new race they met a new race and that's something yeah. with um that that happened a lot with uh with uh uh, Next Generation as well, where they met, like, well, but they, they did get a little in their own heads a lot of times, and it got a little 80s at certain, certain points. But then right. um, I felt like with the Deep best Space episodes Nine, in, 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 yeah, with the best episodes in Next Generation were those. I feel everybody likes traditionally the Star Trek series don't pick up until season five, and somewhere around season five, they start taking off. So, yeah. like, that's when in season five in Next Generation is when they start guys after they're introduced to the Borg they have a lot more violence going on they right. have stuff with the Romulans then when you get on to season five for Deep Space Nine that's when they're in the, uh, the that's when they're exploring the Dominion which by the way my still fundamental belief on this they went into the wormhole they were to then suddenly ships started going missing 
Yeah. They were, that place was under the rule of the Dominion. The Dominion said, stop going through. Right. Or we're going to kill you. And they went, no. Right. And then they got in a giant war. Yeah. All they had to do was go, oh, you live here. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, our bad. You're right. We were violating your territory blatantly. And then, like, nobody realized that the Federation just went, fuck you. And fuck just you. decided, I'm going to explore all your space, whether you like it or not. It's yeah, like, no, no, no. We got a thing going on. And right. it's like, and we're the ones who violated their territory. Right. That's to say, like, singular, like, that cause. And then an Enterprise towards the end. So, like, this is actually my favorite thing that Enterprise. Daniel Enterprise did one funny thing. I don't know if it's, like, my favorite thing or yeah. whatever. But they realized they built the whole thing around one plot line. Mm -hmm. There's, everything's got to fit in with one plot. But then they realized they sucked and nobody liked watching them. And so <laughs> what they did was they completed the story at the end of like season like four. And then what they did was they, they, they were given one more season. But instead of trying to make a new story, yeah. they changed the theme song to the Mirror Universe. That was uh, introduced in the original series. Yeah. And also slightly brought up in uh, Deep Space Nine because they stopped the Dominion from being able to get one of those mirror portals as well on that. Right. But <laughs> um, the, they, or they also they bring it up a lot in Deep Space Nine as well with the mirror universe. But, that, blah, 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 blah. but either way, the evil, the evil versions of people and all that <laughs> jazz. Um, but in the Enterprise, what they did is they just, they, they just the whole last season, they decided to make six episodes about uh, of nothing but the uh, what uh, the mirror universe. What if we were the mirror universe? No explanation. No explanation. They don't. They don't open up and go, "Hey guys, we're doing this now." They just completely change the theme song. Everyone's suddenly evil. No storyline. No plot. Just Parallel universe. And then, for the last six episodes, they go back to the normal universe. And they start answering all the questions that Next Generation and Deep Space Nine brought up that no one had ever answered. So why, uh, for example, in the Deep Space Nine episode, when they go back in the past and they see, and Worf sees what Cleons look like before. Yeah. And they wonder why, and, they, and Worf's line is, we don't talk about it. And the actual reason why that happened, they explain in yep. the last episode of Enterprise, which I know you're familiar with it, is, nope. uh, so, uh, you know, Dr. Sung who made all the androids and yep. data and everything like that. He's also, uh, apparently, uh, even though this doesn't really line up, they made him also responsible for the genetic engineering that uh, created the, the race that Khan is a part of. So uh, the, uh, the advanced oh, the, children. the advanced children, yes. yeah. Um, and also the one that made the doctor in Deep Space Nine as well, um, Julian Bashir. But, wow, um, so, he was a mad scientist. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's responsible for the genetic manipulation, and then when he gave up on that, he made uh, all, uh, android life. Okay. Because he, could, he was not allowed to make genetic uh, modifications anymore. Anymore. That they made him make that, which also kind of makes him more of a jerk than he was in Next Generation, but whatever. Um, the actor's good at, at doing that. Either way. Yeah. But they, um, so what happens is, he was, he was doing that genetic, he was doing like the making con kind of thing. Uh, yeah. And then, the Cleons go, neat, we want to be enhanced too. And right. so they try to take that uh, like DNA advanced We're the super DNA soldier serum. And try to put it into them. Yeah. Problem is, it has a weird reaction with their flu, with their like cold flu virus. And it actually spreads like wildfire amongst the entire population. And it has a major side effect where it destroys their cranial ridge. Oh, weird. Because it makes them human. It, uh... it, it's part of it is that it's, it disintegrates a lot of their Cleon features and then creates a market for fake uh, cranial implants along, among the Cleons. So, like, oh, weird. <laughs> so that's why Worf is mad about it and goes, we don't talk about it. Because there's a period of time in the Cleon race when everyone who got this cold or flu yeah. lost their cranial ridge and had to immediately go out and go get a fake cranial ridge put in so they'd still look like a man. Like, yeah. Because otherwise the entire race is losing their – they're looking like humans what because of that. What a weird – Explanation. What a Expl weird way that they just went like, we're just going to oh, yeah. explain this canon. That's why we didn't do that in the 70s. And, right. And that's such a weird... What, el what else did they explain in, in um, Enterprise? Oh, my God. There so was Deep Space Nine. There was Next it Generation. Was, yeah, they, so they, they explained that one. Um, oh, my gosh. They just, there, there were a few... Sorry, Enterprise is so bad that it just like, if it wasn't for that <laughs> last, last few episodes, I would not have cared at all. But that's literally all they do is I couldn't get into it. I Yeah. That's all they do is go back and explain that stuff. And... It it was, uh, you can just watch the last season. And because it's just Mirror Universe and that, there's no tie over. There's absolutely okay. nothing you need to know. Right, you're not missing anything. Yep. But every, but all the actors are comfortable in their roles. Yeah. So, and which is always, always the biggest problem with Star they, Trek. They don't, they don't matter anymore. They, know, right. they already know they're canceled. 
They know they're everything. They know literally someone just said, be evil. And they all yeah. went, meh. Yeah. And they start doing that. Time of my life. <laughs> and they start explaining. This. So they first they explain the setup for what's going to happen in the Deep Space Nine Mirror Universe stuff. So because in that one, humans are enslaved and the Cleons are in charge and stuff like that. And so in this point, this is like when humans were evil in the beginning. So, okay. Uh, and humans try to take over the world pretty or the universe pretty much. And in this one, one that one they explained in this alternate universe, I thought it was kind of neat. So in um, uh, first contact, the movie, which I think is one of yeah. the best uh, next generation movie uh, in like, your opinion, in my opinion, uh, the next yes. generation ones. Um, okay, I'm not going like full Star Trek canon movies. Well, it's really hard. Yeah, just, but uh, generations in that are the two ones that are going to probably fight the most. But realistically, right. I liked that one the most. Um, but I like a drunk and so yeah, like, first contact was, uh, <laughs> actually the most fun for yeah. sure. And yeah. also it explain it sets up a world that we're entering now. So I, re- if I really hope that that's how world war three ends. And, <laughs> because, but in that one, Zephram Cochran invents the thing, whatever Vulcans come down. Yep. And in that one, when they, when they open, they go, all right, blah, blah, blah. We are Vulcans. The humans rush the ship, kill all of them, take their weapons, take their technology and start conquering the universe. Right. That's that's the beginning of the mirror universe wow. for that. Is everything else is pretty much the same. Enterprise? Yeah. That's the beginning of the mirror universe in that one. In that one, yeah. Wow. That, that's how that's Jesus it, God. It's literally it just shows like the almost the exact same scene with the ship opening. Only in this one all the humans go Aah! and just decide <laughs> to run up with pitchforks and stuff. And yet wow. they're gonna take out Vulcans, which is like, no, they're still stronger than ten men. Right. Like that's not gonna that's the one thing I didn't get about the reboots when they it's not even really a reboot, it's an alternate reality. And because it's based around the idea that that uh, that Nemo, like Spock, going back in time and blah blah blah. Oh right. Um, the only main <coughs> problem with that because of the Christopher Pine one, mm-hmm. there is. Well, it's an alternate universe. It's where, an alternate universe. But also, Pine is actually the only character who's allowed to be different. Everyone else is pretty much 99% of their history is the same. The only one that's actually different is Kirk, because <laughs> in this one he has no father. He had a father, and he was raised by his father. And the other one, in this one, he had none. That's why he's more aggressive and he's different. Like okay. that's why he what he he's the only character who is actually allowed to be different from the original one. Everyone else has to pretty much play it close to the vest as they were, except for for some strange reason in this one, Spock and all Vulcans don't go through Pon Far, which is their mating ritual. Um, they only made what once. show are you talking about? Uh, you know, in the movies. Oh, in the so, movies. Like he he, he dates uh because there's two Chris Pine movies, right? <laughs> Yes. Okay. And in those, in that, in <laughs> I'm that... lost with how the canon. My ad, my ad, my ad. I'm about to do an ad. Rangers, do you wear bras? Because I do. And I am currently wearing my third love bra. Thirdlove.com slash dork, uh, by the way, to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's Third Love dot com slash dork for 15 percent off today here's the thing about third love uh bras i'm wearing it now i need to get another one because i just have the one there's a quiz a fit finder quiz i did not think a bra fitting quiz online would work but it totally worked so you answer a few questions and it's about a minute to take the quiz and they help you identify your breast size and shape and find styles that fit your body they have a fit guarantee you get 60 days to wear it, wash it, put it to the test. You don't love it, return it, and third level, wash it and donate it uh, to a woman in need. They have fit stylists if you want to call them. you can. They're available every day to help via text, chat, or phone. Returns and exchanges are free and easy. Get this, memory foam cups. When I saw it, I was like, why would I want more padding? And then I realized they're memory foam they mold to my shape and are proprietary to Third Love. It's the most comfortable bra I've ever owned, I believe. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering Dork Forest listeners, Rangers, 15% off your first order. I got a Third Love bra and it's great. And you could get 15% off your first order if you go to thirdlove.com slash dork now. I also bought a bodysuit. Anyway, let's get back into the show. Oh, it's pretty much it's all just one line and then they loop back uh, because the reason why they have to is because Avery Brooks won't do a, a, a Star Trek movie. 
he's the, the Cisco, and that was right. the, that was supposed to be the next movie. Was after the next generation uh, was supposed to be that, and mm-hmm. then and he comes back as the uh, as as a god and mm-hmm. as one of the wormhole beings, and uh, that's what he promised. That's how they ended it. But then he hated the show, and he hated everyone <laughs> on it, and he hated all the fans. The fans actually drove him to hate it so much. That he refused to ever do one, and they can't do one without the captain, and so all Deep Space Nine movies had to end, and they had to do that reboot. Right. So he's res- he's kind of responsible for that. Well, yeah, and the thing is, is I don't understand why they don't just recast it. It'll be fine. That's what they should have done, but I think people are like so like, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Like, I mean, they kept Data even after he got like three Jaws, and you're like, that's he's a robot. You can't. That's the one actor you can't have, like, right. like gain weight. Like, he, he could be a robot and get new skin, but he didn't, like... Well, it's like the second and third Terminator movies. You're just like, a robots don't age. But I will say this. Very hard. And the way the Terminator movies progressed, there yep. was a, a certain thing. So, first off, it's a human versus robot. Then it was pre-programmed robot versus more advanced robot. And then it went, same pre-programmed thing. Guess it. And you notice there's a reason why it starts to fall off when they stop innovating the basic progression. Right. That's one thing that they had in all the Star Treks, where in the original series, it was a Vulcan uh, crew member, and everyone else is pretty much strange and, and foreign. And then in the second one, they have more people on, on the ship. Now they have what was a previous enemy, the Cleon. Now there is Worf on, on the ship. And then they have other stranger people, the Romulans and other people like that. And Cardassians are now enemies. Uh, and then in Deep Space Nine, the Cardassians are the ones that are now a member of the ship. And everyone, like, it, it had a continuous, the and, pro- yeah. uh, a continuous progression where somebody who was once an enemy becomes your friend. Mm-hmm. And they, it kept going with that until Enterprise. And then until... Like even discovery, like they're going backwards because they're going back in time. Yeah, and so there's and they're no... doing prequels, and so they have to reinvent these the same enemies instead well, of going forward. Well, that's why also Enterprise sucks so much because they had to make up all these weird time problems because there's no way you could actually just have the same villains. They had to make up something for the person to fight because yeah. they had already they already know how all of that progression goes. They already right. covered it in history. Yeah, you can't make someone more scary after you've already uh, humanized them in the other series. Right, right. And then by refusing to do that progression, they wonder why are these shows not popular? It's like because you have literally thrown away the one thing that made this show good was like I want to see the, another show that takes place after that stuff that has a Dominion member on it that has a Changeling member on it that has right. like other people that were enemies in the previous series being friends in this one right like right. the same thing with the put, Borg yeah, or... well that's what 709 was yep it, she was that progression yep Every everyone follows that progression all the successful shows but all the unsuccessful ones don't just like all the unsuccessful Terminator movies don't follow the own succession <laughs> that they had in the first two. Right. And it's that's what people want to see. They need to see you take it to the next level. And I want to see a larger like the like frankly, T two thousand should have been the the main character or some other facsimile. Right, right. But just stop shoehorning Schwarzenegger in there every five minutes. Anything would have been better. Yeah, yeah. And so now with Discovery. Which I've seen the first season. I haven't seen the second season or any of the shorts or anything. I haven't seen any of the, uh, the shorts or any of that stuff yeah. either as well. I heard the shorts were not <laughs> very good, but I heard the second season is good. Are they on CBS All Access? Probably. That's I, that's the one reason that's keeping me from it is that I just haven't signed up for a CBS right, All Access. Right, it's six bucks a month, and we watched them. We watched the whole first season in like a month, mm-hmm. and then. I believe we're still paying the six bucks a month. Yeah. He should have. He should have like a free trial period. Like, yeah, we should have discontinued and then re up. Well, the only thing we that didn't. they have is like, well, I remember, so, like, uh, Dulce Sloan and I are both big Star Trek fans, and we yeah. signed up for that one time, and then just like fell asleep before actually watching the whole thing. Right, and then I'm pretty sure she still has that <laughs> CBS All Access from just not canceling it. Right. Well, that's what we, and that's what we have. And um, but you watched Discovery the first season. Not the entire first season. Okay. I only got like that little bit that I got to watch, like one or two episodes. Like, right. And, then... and, and the first four episodes, it, it slow plays. Like like all like all Star Trek. But I heard it did very well. It did very well, and it is really cool. And it what I what I found the maddening about it until the very end of the first season yeah. was that it was not Star Trek enough for me. For me, it was mediocre people in space because it's set <laughs> in between. It's set at the like Spock is at the academy. Yeah, uh, uh, Pike is the captain of the flagship. And I don't want to see Pike anymore. Well, and Pike's back in yeah, the second that's, season. That's and I don't know. That's what I saw the commercial for it. I was right. like, whatever. On. It's fine. I, the thing is, is is the only way I could enjoy it 
to some extent is to forget I saw anything before it. And, uh, and well, that, that is true. You kind of have to, that's what happens when you set something in a known universe, but at a, in the middle of it, in the middle of it or pre or prequeling it, right. you know, I mean, it's, it's that old joke about Anakin, like who wants to see Anakin Skywalker before he's Darth Vader. You're just like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. what a nice little boy. I wonder what happens. Oh, he kills billions. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> the boy Hitler. Yeah. Nobody wants that. <laughs> and so the, but the, funny if there's like a time traveler that comes back and goes, ah, you're too cute. I see that, <laughs> I see that bowl cut and just like, it goes in the other direction. We're just going to keep it. And, but yeah, the, but what I did like about the first season is that it ends on a very Star Trek moment. And it turns into Star Trek. So I'm looking forward to the second season of Discovery. Um, but it is irritating that it's on the CBS All Access. They are really not helping themselves. Uh, right. I mean, but at the same time, CBS, you know, extremely popular, doing the number one in the networks. So I think they kind of had, they only had one. It's not like people are going to sign up for CBS All Access so they can watch all the 10 CSIs that they have and right. stuff like that. So the only thing that they had was Star Trek. And they've really pigeonholed it into there. But, I mean, CBS Paramount doesn't really have, I think, a whole lot else to offer. Right. Like, I just w – I was really hoping to be a part of anything else. Like, that's just – Yeah. Yeah. And then now there's this the, – there's a new show with Picard. That but I don't one, even know what that is. That one, I – well, it's – I just know that it's him reprising his role. I don't know any of the specifics. I don't even know if it's actually come out yet. Like, it's, Yeah, I haven't I, heard – I just heard that it was that it was announced and then it was going to be released on um, some special platform that's not <laughs> some that's, other platform. Whenever somebody says, "Hey, you can't watch this normally," I'm like, "All right, fine, I'll wait until like this. Like, I hear more about this. I'm sure that like you know what I mean. Was it is that Marvel show that like the Cloak and Dagger that came yeah. out on on their own like, on Freeform? Yeah, but it's on Hulu and I've watched uh, the first six episodes of that and it's great. Yeah, yeah. Cloak and Dagger is actually great. We were going to watch the end of it tonight. Actually, Ooh. I still uh, have to watch the end of Punisher. Did not watch the Punisher. Not a huge fan of Punisher, <laughs> uh, the comic book. But that's um, although I understand Grant Morrison wrote the last uh, run I and it was great. Enjoyed. So I I do like so uh, acquaintance. I mean, we we we've, we've drunk a few times together. So I won't necessarily go as far as like friend or anything like that. But uh, Donnie Cates, uh, that I know that is writing the current uh, iteration of Frank Castle. Anyway, okay. Like in the Thanos win series, uh, Thanos pretty much actually does kill everybody on the planet. And as yep. he's uh, killing everybody on the planet, uh, Punisher comes out to try to, you know, help. Uh, Thanos knocks Hulk into a building. The building falls on top of Frank Castle. That's the end of him. Now, Frank Castle, when, he go, when he's dying, he's going to hell, obviously. And Mephisto offers him a deal uh, to become the new Ghost Rider. And so Thanos, or Frank Castle becomes the new Ghost Rider. What? Only problem is, when he comes back up, he, got, he comes back up as Ghost Rider on the planet. Turns out everyone's dead on the planet. Thanos already killed everyone and left. So now he's just Ghost Rider on a planet with no one there. So he starts just riding his motorcycle around the damn planet for thousands of years alone, going slowly insane. And then what? Galactus comes up to eat the planet, going, oh, I'm going to eat. Oh, boy, where's all the life go? And then, uh, go, like, the only one there on the planet is guys, an insane ghostwriter going, it was Thanos, he did it, you know, tell you what, you help me kill him, I'll, you know, I'm, a, I'm on a motorbike, I can't leave the planet, there's no one here, and so Galactus <laughs> makes him one of his heralds, gives yeah. him power cosmic to be able to help hunt down Thanos, oh. Uh, Galactus gives Ghost Rider, as, so Frank Castle as Ghost Rider now has cos power cosmic to go hunt down what Thanos. What the fuck? And then by the time, then when they finally get to him, and they they spend all these you know hundreds of years like like fighting against Thanos or whatever thing like that. Then eventually, when it comes to the final fight and everything like that, Thanos really does just kill. Galactus shoots his head off, um, and because also he's become extremely more powerful over the time, and has like all right. this sort of stuff, and uh, then pretty much like looks at Ghost Rider, and uh, Ghost Rider is pretty much like, okay, uh, I guess we lost, yeah, and uh, joins him and becomes his his hero, and actually Thanos enjoys his penance stare as a morning shower. Like he enjoys being reminded of all the, the how the life he's killed every single morning. Oh, it's a, and oh, <laughs> and he keeps the Hulk on a chain on a chain on the chains of uh, the a chain made of the crimson bones of Ciderac, which is Ghost Rider's chain now. So he has a chain made from the from the bones of Ciderac, which are strong enough to hold anyone. 
uh, which was the only thing, if you remember from the like your original Doctor Doom, like Secret Wars was the only thing, that, uh, the Crimson Band of Side Act that could hold the Hulk very easily. Um, and so it's just a really weird, messed up series. Um, and it's ongoing right now? Uh, well, kind of no, because it, it's like, so what ends up, uh, the way it, 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 it wrapped up, and in like they try to go b- back in the past to tell his younger self, hey, don't kill everybody, because then death's going <laughs> to leave you, and she's going to get bored, because you're going to kill everyone for right. death, and then what you do... Right, she's bored. She's bored. She's gone. And right. uh, you killed everything in the universe and you're alone. So uh-huh. maybe rethink this plan just a little bit, just yep. so you know. Um, and at one point, I know, <coughs> I remember like where Silver Surfer spends like thousands of years, turns out, like like in hiding, uh, trying to become a good enough person to pick up Mulgener. Oh, okay. And he actually does kind of destroy Ghost Rider with Mulgener, yep. but then through something, comes kind of gets thrown back in time. He goes, uh, Ghost Rider, Cosmic Ghost Rider as Frank Castle goes back in time to find baby Thanos to kill him. The old kill baby Hitler plot. Yeah. Only this time he tries to use his stare on him and he hasn't killed anybody yet. So he's he innocent. Doesn't, it, yeah, it doesn't do any good. Yeah. So now he ends up stuck with baby Thanos and he's just been walking around the universe with baby Thanos. Uh, that's the current, what's the going currently, on now. Currently he's raising baby Thanos. Yep. And in the past, Ghost Rider is in the past. Insane go- Frank Castle as Ghost Rider with cosmic power in the past. Insane raising baby go- uh, baby Thanos. My mind <laughs> is on fire. It is. It is <laughs> I don't the even know. Funniest storyline. Like, and who's writing that? Uh, Donnie Cates. Okay. Uh, who How wrote, do you spell who, Cates? C A T E S. Okay. He, he, he I've wrote seen his um, name. also like a Venom series and some other stuff. He's written a lot of great stuff. He wrote a lot of stuff with my friend Elliot Rahal. Who's a comedian out of Chicago that now right. writes? He's writing um, a lot of really good stuff right now. Also for like hot, uh, hot lunch special, you like Midwestern stuff. Uh, this is set. He lives in Minneapolis, or Minneapolis and yep. it is set uh, in the Midwest. Uh, hot lunch special is about a, a like dueling mobs that their front is not sanitation it's uh gas station sandwiches and okay. stuff like that it's a, a really well written dark series but he's also written um like a lot of stuff for Valiant, like ninjack versus the universe and a bunch of other stuff um it, it, they're both they, but they wrote together uh and their first comics were together and that's how i met him but okay uh, um yeah yeah but he's wrote some real off the wall stuff right now and then um <laughs> the problem with him raising baby Thanos, as you realize where it's gone wrong, is suddenly uh, Punisher Thanos shows up. Like, a, a Thanos wearing the Punisher outfit suddenly shows up from the future, and then he's like, what is that? Oh, no, what? I've raised him wrong. Oh, my God. Like, I've obviously not raised him right if he becomes this. The like, Punisher. But I can't kill him yet because he hasn't done anything yet, uh. and I'm stuck. I'm stuck in oh the past God. without the ability to kill the person I was supposed to kill. But now, and he calls me dad. Like, Thanos calls him dad all the time now. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's this weird time loop that insane Ghost Rider's stuck in. Yeah. And he caused himself, but he's still batshit crazy. So he has right. no idea what he's doing. And he's still, but he, uh, he can't get himself out of it. I wonder if they're going to keep all this as canon. They've kept us. Uh, they, 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 so they, they, they've kept right now... Uh, so the only thing they've had to keep as canon now is Cosmic Ghost Rider, like, in Cat the past. Frank Castle. Yeah, Frank Castle in the past. Like, okay. They have not linked up whether that is in the going to be in the main universe, whether that is – so, like, the alternate universe of Thanos wins is yeah. based off of the normal universe. But, you know, it's a time – the way Marvel deals with all futures, it immediately becomes an alternate universe when right. you go into the future. Yeah. So all of that is – you know, it, could be thrown it, away. It, it can be abandoned, <coughs> right? Is what you're saying. But uh, as far as whether this past affects anything else, yeah, we don't know any of whether they've accepted any of that. Did yet. you ever read the the Thanos origin story? I forget who wrote it. Oh, like the yeah, the, like the what? when he grew up and he had uh, he was hanging out with the little girl death. Mm, mm-hmm. It was it was on his planet, and then he ends up killing all the people on his planet. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that was. Um... I forget who wrote it offhand, but well, that, uh, they didn't write that. Uh, that was like, like not until later, though, as well. It was just three years ago. Okay, I was about, yeah, because that was when they found out that he had like the whatever disease that made him like the one Titan that 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 looked that way. Right, and, and then his, like his, and he, he was clearly 
clearly mad. Yeah. From birth. Well, that's why his mom tried to kill him right when she was, right when he was born. Um, or, Probably, you know, yeah. His mom tried to kill him the second uh, he was born and was stopped. And uh, but I know that his dad his dad tried to reason with him and tried to and then and, he punches him right through the chest. He kills his own father for that. Well, he kills everybody on that yeah. planet, and and he's uh, he's just. It's when he was getting sick as an adult as well, like, and he tries to get a cure from his father as well, and uh, and then he just kills his father. Well, he kills that whole planet, and it's, I was like, it was such an interesting, like, I had never known enough about Thanos yeah. to go, oh, good, I want to see Thanos' upbringing <laughs> so that we know that he's the nut job that he is and how it all came to be. Yeah. And I, so I really, I forget who wrote it, but it was such a, it was a really nice, like, well, it's sort of. I'm going to you about that later, because I'd like to make sure, because there's a few different versions of, right. I think, Thanos' origin at this point. Like, yeah, especially and this Guardians was, of, I think, the last one. Because also, Guardians of the Galaxy has really messed with it quite a decent bit. It seems like every time they want to use, like, I don't understand how Drax has the ability to just stab him right through the chest in one series, but yet in another one can't do anything. I also, right. I love seeing... Um, Thanos' engagement with Doctor Doom and the New Earth Secret Wars that came out. Oh, that yeah. That was my absolute... He's like, oh, I don't need any Infinity Gauntlet to defeat the likes of you. Rips his entire spine out and goes, I it would appear not. And just yeah. drops his spine. Oh, like, my God. Who pulls someone's spine out from underneath and with the skull still attached? Um, I'm, uh, I'm unf- wait a minute. So, uh, First of all, I don't <clears throat> read Doctor Doom. Okay, Doctor Doom is so, one of my favorite villains of all. Of all, I, I it's, I'm currently reading the Fantastic Four only because Dan Slott's writing it. Okay, so um, uh, I I did like some of the crossover, especially like when Ultimate Fantastic Four met Marvel Zombies originally. There was a lot of really interesting stuff that. Oh, I there. think I read the first arc of that, the Marvel Zombies, that, but that's it. Well, the if you read the word actually starts, which is in Ultimate Fantastic Four. So like, and it, I never read Ultimates. The, sadly, the some of the Ultimates are very some good. of the some Ultimates of them very were bad. amazing. And, yeah. And so it just really depends on the one that you want to go with. Sure. Uh, but in Ultimate Fantastic Four, there was a really neat storyline where pretty much um, the Fantastic Four and the Marvel Universe like managed to open the portal to get into their universe. They, okay. They, they managed to uh, lock them up. Um, so like the zombie, whatever, or, or uh, Fantastic Four are locked up. And it, like, you know, the Ultimate Ones were like, don't. Anybody let them out. Nobody let them out. Like, it's the one thing you got to do is not let them out. We got other shit to deal with because they mm-hmm. just gone to the negative zone and this demon and actually inhabited human torch, uh, John Storm, saying that he's because he was the most powerful being in that universe for that moment when he was there. And he's a demon that'll eventually take over, blah, blah, blah. And um, in the ultimate uh, doom, doom is it, it, one of the neatest villains I've ever known, just simply because of the one twist, that when realizing that his villainy alone was not enough, and he heard about Doctor Strange, and he like he had his own like uh, mystical upbringing also, with, like technically with his mom, and then like in the different series, he finds out in different ways that he has ties to magic. Or has, oh, right, right. He, he actually, wants to use magic as science, and he, science he, as magic. That I vaguely know. Well, he's okay. the only one that actually goes, wait a minute, my science isn't quite working enough. What if I just also add? My, wait, wait, I can just go to Doctor Strange's house, steal all of his books, right? Like of one villain that found out about another, and just like, no, no, no I'm not even here to kill you. I'm just stealing all your shit. I just want to be more powerful. Like, right. I actually am going to increase my skill set if you don't mind. Yes, I'm going to go to school, and he actually steals all the books, and then he in, in, in his metal armor he inscribes all of the spells so that all he has to do is just touch to cast all these spells. Oh, okay. And so he becomes like already a scientist and already doing all this stuff and already being powerful and right. everything, but then also being able to be a magician and becomes so powerful. Right. He actually becomes the most powerful villain in the entire Marvel Ultimate Universe. Ah. He is the most powerful being. Okay. And so when they use this incant into uh, and what happens is he does something to mind swap with Reed Richards, so that he's actually in Reed Richards' body or whatever. Right. And uh, he tries to do this exorcism on Johnny to get that demon out. And this is all of my while the zombies are in this prison. Right. And he gets the de- uh, the demon comes out, and then it looks for the most powerful being in the entire universe, and that is actually Doom with the with the spells and with Reed Richards' brain. Yeah. Inside of it, sucks into it into him. Yep. And then 
The, in the middle of that, the zombies break out by doing what is really – how the zombies break out is absolutely hilarious. Where, one, where Reed Richards just goes like, see this hair. I've encoded this DNA on this to blah, blah, blah. To do that. And he does this giant long sci-fi explanation. See you guys. And he clicks a pen and then they all disappear as yeah. if as he had teleported out. And then they all go, oh, no, what happened? And then they open the door and then they just eat all of them. They go, you idiots. We didn't go anywhere. We just oh went invisible. God. We have an invisible woman. Oh, my God. What did you think we did? They just did that. Then they used that to escape they just went like we're so smart we're gonna disappear now and then they, then they open the door to look for yep, them the guards and believed then, it yeah. and they eat all of them they start eating everybody right and then like everyone's freaking out like they, this demon like like reed richards they turns out is actually dr doom and doesn't have his powers the same way so he doesn't really know how to help nearly as well suddenly dr doom with all the spells on him and with all the and reed richards brain and the demon inside of him shows up to and then starts to and uh is just about to like start to fight the zombies and Reed Richards is got, uh, like, or Dr. Doom, the original brain of him, is like, oh, you're not stealing my glory now, you son of a bitch, now that you brought my body back to me and everything yeah. like that. And he switches back with him. And in his last act, it's more of a fuck you to everyone. Like, he immediately just, like, kills all those Fantastic Four, the zombie versions. Okay. Mercilessly. Like, you, like, like, would, like absolutely murders them in a period of two pages in the comic. Right. Compl- but the zombie versions. The zombie versions. Right. And then goes... Which to- he's always wanted to do. And then because he's got the demon inside of him and he knows he's going to die and anything like that, it's about to explode out of him, he just jumps into the Marvel zombie universe and you just see him there surrounded by all the millions of Marvel zombie versions. Yeah. And he's like, come on. And it's like, it's the most powerful version of Dr. Doom. Yeah. F- like filled with a demon inside of him who can't die. He has metal so they can't bite his skin. They can't do any of the infection on him that they normally right. would. He can cast spells all day long. He never gets tired because he's inhabited with a demon that actually gives him more strength. Right. And he starts just destroying the shit out of him. But you don't get to like see the rest of that arc. Yeah. You just see him literally go, no, with my last breath, I'm going to be the badass one. You don't yeah. get this from me. I'm going to kill my own Fantastic Four the way I finally wanted. I'm going right. to go into a whole universe where I get to kill everyone. And right. it was just, I absolutely loved it. Like that version. Who wrote that? Oh, that was, that's, I, I don't remember the uh, the the author for that. That's one of the last series of. Uh, of uh, Ultimates? Of Ultimates 4. But eventually, it ch- like Ultimates went to a whole different direction when. Uh, like they combined. Re- 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, also then. Ultimate Richards goes crazy, becomes that villain, um, that all-knowing villain with the weird white helmet. Um, uh, this is the first Fantastic Four I'm reading, and I'm only reading it because of Dan Slott. Well, now the, I like Dan Slott. The, the new... Did you read the Spider-Verse? Yes. Uh, when, the, when... Not the second one. Not the second one. I, 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 Superior? I saw a, uh, a a preview of it. I love the idea of Spider's Man uh, a lot. Like, uh, but Well, I there's the multiple Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse, and then there's a Superior Spider-Man. Did you read that? No. I'm not sure. Uh, I read the first Dr. Uh, Doc Ock. And Spider Man, um, Spider uh, Spider Man. Oh no, I've read that one where Doc Ock takes over Spider Man's yes. brain for a long time. Yes, does the brain thing that that uh, clearly that took a, read and was that after? No, that there, so there's one. So that version of was that before? There's two. So there's one after Doc Ock is removed. There's one ver- there's one that's like coming out like relatively like new like within this year that is a second Spider's verse. Right, but the the one from before. Is the one I'm uh, the the one that already happened. That's yeah, yeah, what yeah. I'm talking about. And, but did it come out after the ultimate Reed Richard Doctor Doom switch? Yes. It so ca- Reed it Richard Doctor Doom switch brains, and then someone said Doc Ock and Spider Man should switch brains. For, yeah, but only in this one, um, Doc Ock is is doing it to try to prove that he could be a better hero. While in this one, Re- Doctor Doom has no no no. Yeah, like I, I feel like. Did he do it? What, yeah, why did Doc Ock swap over I, I to? Think, uh, uh, I mean, why did um, uh, Doctor Doom go into Reed Richards' brain to, uh, I, to like, date the girl? No, no, no. The actually, just, <laughs> invisible just, woman. Just, uh, I think just because honestly, part of it is, is is a lot of hate of him, and and he also wanted to prove that if I. So I guess you're right, and in some ways they were, their motivations are very similar, and they're both like egotistical, wanting to prove that they actually were the better hero the entire time. Okay. So in that sense, they are both extremely similar. No, but, y- but no, one I'd... of them tried to be a hero, while Doctor Doom never actually tried to be a hero. He, oh, he just made Ray Richards into a bad guy. He was only there for like like a, a couple hours. Tries to do this uh, exorcism, can't do it right. Like he does it wrong. So because that's the only reason why this shit happens. Because if he did the exorcism right, then he would have gone back to the negative zone. But the demon doesn't. It just goes to the next strongest host. Ah, that okay. Was, that was the problem. That's, right. That's how they kind of figure out that it's because he's like, shit, I still can't get this right. Like, right. I'm still 
cute making mistakes. Like, yeah. I'm still not Reed Richards. And everyone's right. like, that's weird that you made a mistake. And he's like, ah, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, that's where it, like, all starts <laughs> to fall apart. Right. But he's only him for, like, a very short period. Like, like the Doc Ock run was a decent run. Oh, that was a full-on, that was a serious <laughs> run. Yeah. And, you know, Doc Ock, you know, he gets his PhD. Yeah, I mean, l- literally, he was a superior Peter Parker. <laughs> in, in, ma- in many ways, yeah. yeah. Like, he did, like, also, but that's what I like uh, in, what was it? In uh, that that alternate future um, one where Spider Man's sperm is actually what gives Mary Jane cancer. Um, what? Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's that's an old Boris joke. No, um, that's but yeah, but that is that that is in a in a uh, Spider Man alternate universe future uh, where Spider Man is no longer Spider Man, pretty much, and it's because he realized he killed, he gave Mary Jane like a shit ton of cancer. Um, and <laughs> why like, does, uh, how why, does his sperm have cancer? Because uh, he's radio, it's radioactive, apparently. Uh, uh-huh. This is a, this is a very nineties. So, uh, right. A very very and in the nineties, a comic named Boris from Los Angeles used to do a joke about how I, I couldn't get laid if my sperm cured cancer. <laughs> and, and he's like, and weirdly enough, it does. So, um, but uh, and then. When was the? When did he give her? Was it a ninety in the nineties as well? Because um, maybe Boris ni- got the joke ni- from it. Nineties, <laughs> ni- ni- early two thousands. Um, okay. So actually, but this is the one. Um, Sean. Yeah. We didn't get to talk about Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, because <laughs> uh, it's been an hour. Oh no. Well, yeah. we, we talked about Star Trek. Yeah, we did. We talked about some I, Star I Trek, and then we, we weeded I, off into Marvel, amazing Marvel. I think we're just nerds, and I yeah. think that's 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 kind of allowed to, to oh, happen. Oh, completely, completely. It's either that or we start butting heads over who knows more about one particular thing. I'd oh, much rather prefer this win. version. Yeah, yeah. This, this, is, is, a, this, is the, this was the greatest. It was, and I and I love a, a, a Marvel weed off, and weeding off into Marvel is, is <laughs> fantastic. You guys, we... I have just listened. We've been talking with uh, Sean White, and it's at Sean White Comedy on all the things. And Sean is spelled S E A N in the Irish way. Uh, you got to uh, just follow him on Twitter and find out about LA shows. And uh, you're also doing the road, I'm sure. And yeah, yeah. I try to get out when I can, but also I have uh, two albums available on uh, Spotify, iTunes, uh, AST Records, uh, Dead and, and all the Gone, things. and uh, 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 Angry and Alone. All right. So, uh, Sean White, you guys, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you very much for having me. And you know the rules out there, Rangers. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. (laughs) My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?